passengers can keep dry in the rain boarding and leaving their planes thanks to a revolutionary new loading dock in operation at New York's Idlewild Airport. After landing and taxiing near the terminal, the plane's wheels are placed on cars resting on sunken tracks and then locked in place. Next, the plane is pulled sideways on the tracks toward the terminal. At the end of the run, the plane's doors are flush against the loading dock. The terminal door is opened and passengers can step right onto the dock. Passengers boarding planes also can enter directly from the terminal. Baggage too is kept dry while being loaded or unloaded. For passenger comfort, a new look in commercial aviation. School children in France get their first introduction to milk as Premier Mondes France's program to wean the small fry away from wine as a beverage is started in schools like this near Paris. Everybody washes hands before the start of an event which will make history in France. Since it's formal, teacher will pour. Youngsters from 6 to 11 get the free milk which they take in small soup bowls, hot and liberally laced with sugar. Except for one in 10 who says it's against the doctor's orders, milk seems to be going over with even the most fastidious young Frenchman. But monsieur, certainly something can be done about the napkin situation. The annual contest to pick America's ruler of the range gets underway in New York with 100 contestants mixing their favorite recipes. 79 women, 20 teenagers, and one lone man, a bachelor, needless to say, are trying for a $25,000 top prize, all very boring to this guest. Walnut cookies, cinnamon cake, lemon pie, and ginger batter blend into an aroma to sway the sternest judges who dig in, in a judicial sort of way, of course. All is ready, and here's the winner, Mrs. Bernard Cotine of Washington, D.C. With a pie called Open Sesame, she's queen of the kitchen. The superliner United States arrives in New York, bringing the Duke and Duchess of Windsor on their winter visit to America. Their pug dogs, Trooper and Disraeli, enjoy the trip with the Duke and Duchess. A white man travels to the land of the Eskimos, the village of Olatsivik in the Canadian Arctic, to share their primitive life for 14 months. Doug Wilkinson, Canadian movie cameraman, lives with this Eskimo family, sharing their everyday chores, like chopping up frozen seal meat, to feed their 66 hungry Eskimo dogs every other day. All this is part of a film study Wilkinson is preparing on the Eskimos' everyday life and problems. Wilkinson has learned the Eskimo language, has lived in their tents, and believes that with the Arctic opening up, education and improvements can better the life of the Eskimos. A radical new style in houses, the Roundhouse makes its debut in California. Beneath the stepped roof is an indoor-outdoor type of dwelling, modeled somewhat on the Indian teepee. Glass separates the steps of a roof just right for climbing. Glass also encircles the stone chimney, standing almost two stories tall in the center of the house, which was designed by architect George Frank Ligar. The foam rubber cushions cover chairs of concrete, which are really supports helping to hold up the roof. The bedrooms feature pie wedge beds of foam rubber eight inches thick, no concrete. When it's bedtime, she just goes to the closet and pulls out the wall, cutting off the bedroom from the rest of California's revolutionary roundhouse. Relaxing at the world-famous Beverly Wilshire Hotel, Marilyn, in a long-lined swimsuit of silver lame, is joined by Rosemary in an iridescent romper suit with net bodice. At Pasadena, two more Rosemary Reed creations for resort wear. Here a cotton suit with cuffed shorts. Marilyn wears a matching jacket and suit with pearl trimmed bodice. Another pool and another style. 
Rosemary in a form-fitting Lastex suit piped with black wool knit. With unique double shoulder straps, Marilyn's wool suit is also edged in black. By a picturesque waterfall pool, Rosemary models an elasticized taffeta suit with glittering rhinestones. Marilyn's white suit is highlighted by an embroidered winged bodice. At the Bel Air home of Arnold Kirkaby, both girls appear in Rosemary Reed swim time fashions of elasticized floral jacker. Rosemary's suit is of the same fabric with a new look hourglass silhouette. A fashion forecast for the summer sun. In New South Wales, a cross-country bicycle race finds tired riders taking showers in the saddle. And hungry riders getting meals on the fly. Wheeling deep into sheep country on their five-day, 500-mile marathon, the persistent pedal pushers pass grain silos in fertile western wheat fields. And then it's into the hills, legs pumping still through territory rich in gold and ore. Whether they're first or last, there's a geography lesson for all in this cycle chase down under.